Hey everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, we're gonna be removing air layers. And this is my Black Madeira KK tree that we have planted here in the ground. And we put on a number of air layers. You can see there's one pot down there, two, and then we had these smaller air layers up here. We did a video on how we did this, how we started this process in August. So if you wanna see the details of how we did that, go back and check that video out. It's really simple. We put these on and now about three months later, a lot of these should be ready. And I want to show you guys the results of this. And I want to talk a little bit about some other air layers that we took off. We have them actually over here. We'll show you guys how I got them um, off the tree into their pots. What I'm doing with this particular tree, because this is a, a black Madeira and it's going to be, in my opinion, enshrined in like the fig hall of fame. Like it's just, it's just one of those figs that always can get you a certain price. Um, you know, in terms of fig economics, this is probably a really good one, I think, to have in the ground. You know, um, that way you get yourself more cuttings, more wood, more easier air layers. Um, everything is just, uh, it's a nice little cash cow, this little tree right here. And you know what? You could make an argument that I could actually get fruit. Um, in fact, every year, even though we have plenty of fruits still on the tree, I did get quite a few fruits off of this, and I expect next year to even get more. Um, so what, what we did this and why we did this though, was not just for money reasons. We really need to fix the form of the tree because this was growing in a pot and it was a single stem tree and that's the ideal form. But as you can see with all of my in-ground trees here, they're all bushes. And that's the ideal form that inevitably they'll be anyway. Um, even it, you know, regardless if I prune them or not, here in this climate, they will just all get killed to the base and have to restart. So I'm gonna just save all this wood by air layering it off. And you know, this is a really thick cutting right here. I mean, this is like a six year old trunk. And this particular trunk is just not going to air layer well, number one. And it's certainly not gonna root well. So ideally I should have put these pots on around the main trunk very early in the season because there's a, there's a good chance that there's no, uh, no roots in these big pots here, which is unfortunate. I only gave it about three months. And if you have older wood like that, a variety like Black Madeira that doesn't air layer that easily in general, it has such a heavy fruit load. It's not that vigorous. Um, you know, this is like kind of pushing it, putting on these big air layers here. Um, so I'm going to take all these off for you guys. I'm going to set you guys down. And then we're going to do this process. And I, I, normally I wouldn't have done this now. I would have waited until the tree is completely dormant because it's not. You can see all these leaves around here. Um, they look like they got hit with something real bad. <laughs> because we just had our, our hard frost, our first hard frost, and we still need more. Um, we, I'm still expecting a few more to come in and that's gonna really put them into dormancy quickly. Uh, but the sap flow is still flowing in here, which I don't necessarily know is really a good or a bad thing in terms of air layers, you know? Um, but certainly for the health of the tree, I'd wanna have all that all that sap flow go down back into the roots, out of the wood, and then down into those roots. And it's stored in the roots in the wintertime. And that really helps uh, the processes in the spring. So I'm just gonna saw this off real quick. So we got one off here. And we'll go through this whole process of up potting it and we're gonna take off all these fruits. So people are probably like, well, what are you gonna do with all these fruits? We're, they're definitely not gonna ripen now that we had this really, really hard frost that came in. Um, there are some fruits on here that are swelling, which is a great sign um, that they could ripen, especially with a frost that comes in, but it's quite unlikely at this point. Uh, we're probably not gonna, it's not even really the best fruit quality to be honest with you. So I see no reason to keep this on. All right. So we got two down. And now we need to actually come in here and take off the trunk. 
Um, so let's do that as well. This is the real tricky part. I'm gonna kind of move you guys so you can see what I'm doing here. You're probably gonna fall. <laughs> All right, there we go. So we have to separate this under here and that's really quite tricky. Um, let me move some stuff out of my way. Sorry for the delay here, guys. Okay. So this is kind of like tree surgery, isn't it? And I'm not even really sure if I'm gonna be able to get in here. And I think I wanna switch, believe it or not, I think I wanna switch saws. I should switch saws. You know what, this will be easier if I come in around the other side. I think I'm gonna take the whole bottom off first. You guys probably can't see what I'm doing here, unfortunately but I'm coming in at the very base of the tree. <sighs> this is a bear here, guys. All right, we got it. Perfect. All right, and now I'm gonna cut this in half. I think this is easier this way. Oh, shit. Man down. Man down, man down. Guys, we're losing everything. <laughs> Holy hell. Uh, just one second here, guys. All right, we're back. We're back. Whew. We made it, guys. We're still alive. Everything's okay. I think I am going to edit out some of that, but <laughs> for your viewing pleasure, I think I'm probably going to keep some of it in there. But you can see right down in here, there's the base. And we've got our two uh, branches or three branches here that are coming from down below. And that's going to really help get the right form of this tree. We saved those branches. I'm gonna move this big cinder block out of the way. And now you guys get a really nice view of what this looks like. Pretty nice, huh? Pretty cool, right? And what I'm also gonna do, because I'm chopping all these trees down to six to 12 inches, this is all gonna get chopped down as well to six to 12 inches. So these are you know, almost three foot tall branches here. But now I have this monster to deal with and I have to cut this in half because this is potentially two different trees if I really wanted it to be. Um, but I have a feeling that neither of these have any roots just by what I just went through, unfortunately. Um, I have a feeling that this isn't really looking too good for the process but let me um put you guys down we'll see if we can get this to be a success unfortunately i don't know i really don't and i may not know to be honest um but let's come in here and get this dealt with Where is the, where is the trunk here, guys? Okay. Alrighty. 
success. We've actually done this, guys, by the way, for a few years now. We've done this method a couple years in a row. And unfortunately, this is a complete failure, what I'm looking at. As you can see in here, here's the, the score that we did. We took off the cambium. And you can see there is no roots. Oh, there is a little bit of root down there. See that in the soil? But that's it. That's all I got. So this is just a process that needs so much time. And clearly three months is not long enough. Uh, this one down here, pulling this one up, and this has got nothing either, very little. So this is pretty much the story. And you know, it's a failure, but at least you guys can learn something from this. This is not a very quick process. Unlike these other air layers over here that we took off in the beginning, you know, this is like so much easier. The wood is a lot thinner. The wood's a lot younger. It's gonna air layer, it's gonna form roots a lot easier. So this is almost a guarantee, but even then it's not really a guarantee. If you don't really get this on early enough, you're not gonna succeed. Um, oh, by the way, check this out, look at that. There's red honey coming out of this black Madeira. Holy crap, I never seen that before, at least from my own tree. Look at this. Yo, that's pretty awesome right there. That's really cool. Anyway, so to go back to what I was saying is that some of these are just not gonna have success. Like I've took off a number of these today and these are put on the same time, really, as the Black Madeira, but they're just so far behind. Um, the Blanche de Duce Saison here, which was on an in-ground tree, and it was put on one-year-old growth, this rooted so well. Whereas some of this other stuff here that was in pots was put on at the same time, De La Roca and Sucrete. I'm at, I have some other ones here, Del, Del Sinwami Gran actually had some decent roots, but because they're in pots, they don't root nearly as quickly. That process doesn't happen nearly as quickly. Here's another one actually over here. This is my, this is a Cavalieri that I put on. And this one actually has some decent roots. They're hardened up now, but nothing really that's like really special. You know, this isn't like, oh my, you know, wow, this is really turning heads and all that. So I think what I'll do now is I'm gonna, I'm gonna up hot one of these for you guys, just very quickly. It's real simple, we've done this before. Um, I think what I'm gonna do first is actually take some cuttings off of this, and put you guys down. That way you guys can see. Uh, my pruning shears are over there, so we're not gonna even deal with that. Now, it's a good idea at this point, you don't have to, but everything's gotta be in balance. The roots to what's on top has to be in balance. So if we don't have, if we have too much, too many things up top that are taking away moisture from the soil, because that's how trees work. They suck up moisture from the roots, goes up through the wood and gets released out through these figs and through the leaves. So by doing that, removing them, we're eliminating a lot of that evaporation, the transpiration I think is the, the real correct word here. This also helps with eliminating a lot of that weight. What I'd also do, recommend here, um, we gotta take this bag off. Do that very carefully, don't disturb the roots. The sandwich bag method I find works really well. 
you just get yourself a sandwich bag and go back and check out that other video that we did because that's that's really where I show you guys how to do all this. We've also done a video showing you guys the results this year of some other air layers. We had pretty good roots on a number of trees and it's unfortunate that this is just the case with the number of these, but you're not going to have great success every time. You know, this isn't, this isn't a guarantee. A lot of these trees are going to have to continue rooting, continue growing before they can really become established trees. Like they're, you know, this is not like an instant gratification method by any means. Um, so we're try just trying to get this off very easily. We're not trying to remove any of the soil, not to serve any of the roots. What you'll see in here, because there's a nice hiding spot for scale, is just check for scale. And you can see there's some on here. I'm just rubbing it off. This will dramatically, believe it or not, really help the tree in the future by doing that now. <laughs> um, so I'm going to fill some of this up soil place this in and you know what I could probably ship this I could probably sell it right now if I really wanted but I don't think the roots are really that strong it would certainly survive the winter time but I'd prefer the following season let this let this stay dormant um, in my storage area keep it alive and then in the following spring because it does go dormant it's gonna really put out some crazy growth um, and it's gonna get off to a wonderful start but at that point I think it's better personally to sell it then I mean people will see this and say oh well it doesn't have that many roots but I know for sure it's gonna get through the winter time I know for sure it's going to um, really put on some vigorous roots vigorous growth when this tree when this thing wakes up the following year and you're gonna be off to a nice start as I was saying before though the unfortunate part is that it doesn't have the greatest roots, so it is going to take a while for this thing to get its act together. But right now I'm just putting on near the label what this thing is. Because you need to keep track of what these things are. It's really important. So that's it. That's really it, guys. We failed with our bigger ones, but you know what? We just need more time. That's all it is. Unfortunately, you know, in terms of the time it takes, I'll show you guys. The time it takes over here for the this larger, older wood to put out roots, that's the, that's the thing that's really holding this whole issue up. You know, um, once they form roots, as you can see, we've got that root there then it's a very quick process but i need another two months for this thing to be fully rooted out at least in this in that pot so it is what it is but we'll talk to you soon guys i hope you enjoyed this i hope you learned something and this is the remnants now my black madeira kk a six-year-old tree <laughs> um yeah it'll be back in full swing believe it or not next year so we'll talk to you guys soon. I hope you, like I said, I hope you enjoyed this. Check us out on figboss.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And uh, we'll see you for tomorrow's video, okay? Take care, guys. Catch you later.